Okay, so we know um, about the number pi, right? That's an irrational number. The, the reason why it's an irrational number is the value of it is, you know, like 3.14159, and then it just never ends. There is no pattern to it, right? So that's why it's an irrational number. Root 2 is another irrational number. Now, so we have pi, right? That specific number, 3.14159 and so on and so on, that, you know, that specific number, it shows up so often, right? Like when we're doing, when we're dealing with squares and so on, that it's got a special name and symbol, pi. There is another number like that, which has a value of approximately 2.718 instead of 3.14, 2.718. That is also another number that comes up very often in a lot of calculations. That number is given the symbol E. Instead of pi, it's just E. It's a lowercase italicized E, never uppercase. And it's named after a mathematician who was Dutch. So his name is written like that. And it's read as Euler, like it's Dutch, right? Um, Euler. That's how it's read. It's not Euler, much to my disappointment. Even many math teachers mispronounce his name. But it's a Dutch name. It's called Euler. Who are we to judge how, you know, people spell their last names, right? Because we have a variety of spellings for our last names. So Euler, he was a mathematician. He, it's after him that E is named, okay? So log base 10 of let's say x that's the common logarithm and we write it as just log of x right shorthand now what if you have log base e of x this special number log base e now if 10 is the common base for the log e is the natural base i mean e and log are just soulmates of each other right so log base e has another abbreviation this is called the natural logarithm and it's written as ln of x okay so ln is just the same as log base e and the reason why it's ln is because it's a natural logarithm but in french so it's logarithm natural right ln in it's in French, so that's where it's a, right? It's a natural logarithm. So, <coughs> lowercase, right here, okay? So, it does matter, actually. So, log base E of X is just ln of X, and that is the natural logarithm. Now, there are some things that you just have to memorize, and these are the following, that these are what you have to memorize. The properties of natural logarithms. So when you have E and LN in close proximity like that, E to the LN of X, they kind of vaporize each other. So that just becomes X. LN E to the power of X is just X. Now, LN of E is one, okay? You will have to memorize that. So now if you ask why, what is the base when you have an LN? Nope, E. e. So now, if logs are exponents, what should be the exponent of this red E to get an E? One. That's why ln of E is one. Okay? So honestly, do yourself a favor. Just memorize these. ln of E is one. Okay. So here, we're not going to do much. We're not going to do any math for this problem. We're just going to write each of these in logarithmic form. Okay? So logarithmic form, remember a logarithm is always equal to an exponent, right? So here the exponent is this. Every exponent needs a base. E is the base, okay? So this would be log base E, right? But we don't say log base E. What do we say instead? Ln. Ln. So Ln of 23 equal to X, right? Remember? 
this exponent is always the answer. Let's do that again. This is the exponent. The exponent has to be the answer of the logarithm, 4. If you want, build your logarithm this way. So now, this has to be log base. What's the base? What's the base? E, so the logarithm will be ln, ln of x. Yeah. So it's really, okay, so this is what we have. So this is what we have. So this should be log base e of x equal to 4. Is that right? Right? Log base e of x is equal to 4. But we never write log base e. Instead, we write ln. ln of x is equal to 4. And so I don't even... Yes, and I don't even want you to, I don't want you to first write this and then that because nobody does this, okay? It just goes that way, okay? All right. So, now, There's no work the for these two, we're just rewriting them. Okay, so now, here we go. Let's write these in exponential form, okay? So, remember, the answer to a logarithm is always the exponent. That means this is the exponent, so, if this is ln, what's the base? E. E, e to the power of 1.2528 is equal to x. <laughs> huh? The answer to the logarithm is the exponent. So, here, the answer to the logarithm is the exponent. Okay, take a look here. Okay, so look, look at this next one. I have a logarithm, ln of 25 equals something. This is the logarithm. The answer to the logarithm is x. This x is the exponent. So now, don't answer, just listen. Every exponent needs a base. In here, the base, since it's ln, is an e. So the way I would write this is the base to the power of the exponent equals 25. Okay, Wait, let's... Will the logarithm always be the base of the exponent? Okay, no, the logarithm is not the base. E is the base. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to write up another one. Okay. Yes. So for the other one, you said the one that's going to be back to the x exponent part, why is it, then why is it just... Oh, because the answer is ln, sorry. So, um, let's do another one. Okay, so let's do another one. So I have ln, which is a logarithm. I need to write it as an exponential function. So I know a logarithm is an exponent. The answer to a logarithm is always the exponent. This is the answer to the logarithm, right? Logarithm equals this. This is the answer to the logarithm. Now, every exponent needs a base. Okay, what is the base of this situation here? E. e. The base is E because ln has a built-in base of E. Okay, so now exponent, um, base to the power of exponent is equal to 4. Okay, here is another thing I want us to do, okay? Um, look up here for a minute. All right. Um, actually, maybe I can write it over here. Okay, so I'm, you don't have to write this because I'm going to erase it in a little bit as well. So, um, you don't have to write it. Just work with me here. What is the base here? Ten. Ten. What is the base here? Okay. What is the base here? Mm. Ten. When you just have log, there is a hidden base there of ten. Okay, so now, what is the base here? Um, what is the base? 
E. Whenever you see an LN, the base is automatically an E. Why? Because LN of 5 is the same as log base E of 5. But no one writes log base E. That's just embarrassing. So instead, I write this as ln of 5. Okay? Yes. Okay. So if I have of these, you mean? Yeah. Okay. So suppose I have, um, right, okay, see, you have to open, you have to, okay, so the first time we go around it, we go about it, you just have to have an open mind, okay, all right, so let's go over here for a minute. So now it says to write each of these as a single, okay. Um, condense these as a single logarithm. So the first thing we do, remember, is all of the coefficients become exponents. This is just like what we were doing before. So here, this will be ln of 1 half to the power of 3 plus ln of 6 squared. Okay. If I were to simplify this, this would be ln of 1 over 8, right, because 1 over 2 cubed is 1 over 8, plus ln of 36. Now, it says to write as a single logarithm. So here, okay, hang on. I, I have 1 ln, all right? Now, because these two lns are being added to each other, what I have to do is I have to multiply these. So this will be 1 over 8 times 36. And now I need to simplify this a little bit more. So if I divide by 4, I get ln of 1 over 2 times 9. So this is ln of 9 over 2. Okay, sunny. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to scan and see if there are any coefficients. All the coefficients have to become exponents. So now take a look at what this will turn into. ln of 3 squared minus ln of 4 minus ln of y. Okay. Right, so this is ln of 9 minus ln of 4 minus ln of y. Okay, now, take a look. We're going to convert this into 1 ln. Okay, so the one with a 9, is it a positive or a negative out front? Positive, it goes in the numerator. The one with the 4, is it a positive or a negative? Negative, it goes in the denominator. So imagine there is a two-story house. That's it, just two stories. You can either live upstairs or downstairs. If you have a negative in front, you go downstairs. If you have a positive in front, you go upstairs. The Y, does it have a negative or a positive in front? Negative, so it goes downstairs. And that's it. Now we're done. So let's recap. The 9 had a positive in front, so that went upstairs. The 4 has a negative downstairs. Y has a negative downstairs. The other thing would be to see if you can reduce any of these fractions. You can't, so you're done. That's the answer. That's it. Okay, that's it. Straightforward. No, it's ln of. ln of. Okay, not times. ln of. Okay, so now let's solve these equations. So here, here's the x. So first, I need to subtract a 4 from both sides. So I get 3e negative 2x is equal to 6. Now, divide by 3, divide by 3. e to the negative 2x equals to 2. 
Now, this is back to what we were doing on the first page. This is an exponential. To solve this, I have to write this as a logarithm. All right? So now, um, the answer to a logarithm is always an exponent. So this will be the answer to the logarithm. Okay? So now, this is, the base here is E. This is going to be log base E, which is ln of 2. Okay? Equals negative 2x. But now, what do I do to solve for x? Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So x is ln of 2 over negative 2. Let's plug that in our calculator. So here, yes, so grab, okay, so in here, you do control, and then you're going to go down, right? This was the log button next to the one, it's the one to the left of it. So this ln of 2 divided by negative 2, and then before you write the answer, always compare, is this what you wanted? Yes, it is. So x is negative 0. Point, so 10,000, that's four, four decimal places, 3466. Add 12. Okay, so add 12, add 12. 3e to the 4x is equal to 27. Now, I have to divide both sides by 3. Okay, so let's pause here for a minute. e to the 4x is equal to 9. Okay, now l just listen. Listen. So here, I have an exponential I need to get rid of. The way to get rid of exponential functions is logarithms. Now, the answer to a logarithm is the exponent. So the answer to my logarithm is going to be the exponent. Now. I have to do log base of something. The base here is E. Log base E is just ln. And the thing I haven't used yet is the 9. So now, if you like, okay, so now we're going to divide by 4, divide by 4. So, hang on. Okay, so ln of 9 all over 4. So do you see how ln of 9 is completely separate here? So we're going to do ln of 9, I close the parenthesis, divided by 4. Because that's not what we were doing. Because here it was all ln, ln, oh, ln. Okay. Right, so here. Zero. Okay. Okay. So here. Now, now I have a logarithm. Okay. So I'm going to make this an exponent. Okay. An exponent of the 5x. So this will be, or you know what, actually no, I'm going to do it in a more easy way. So we're going to solve for ln, right? What's the best way to get rid of that 2? Just divide both sides by 2. Yes, ln of 5x is equal to 3. Now, to get rid of ln, I have to do an exponential. So just listen to what I'm going to do here. The answer to a logarithm is always an exponent. This is an exponent. Every exponent needs a base. In this case, tell me, what's the base? E. e. So e to the power of 3 is equal to... 5x. Now I need to solve for x. What am I going to do? Divide by 5. So x is e cubed after divided by 5. So let's go over here. Okay, e is the same button you were using for the ln to the very left of the 1. e to the power of 3. Exit out of this. Divided by 5. 
when you press enter, before you blindly copy, look to see if it looks like what you meant for it to look like, which it does. So this is, well, this, this, e to the 3 over 5, right? So for example, if you weren't careful, you might have done something like this. In that case, this is completely different. You see that? So the one I want is the 4.0171. Okay, yeah. Where is it? No, sorry. We gotta do this. Okay, what are we gonna do? It's one over three times. What am I gonna multiply? Divide by one third, which is the same as multiply by positive three over one. There's no negative, yeah. So here I have ln of x equals six. Okay, this is a logarithm. The answer to the logarithm is always an exponent. The base is e e to the 6 equals x. This is going to be a big number. 403.43. Or 4... Yeah, that's right. 4288. So, 4289. Okay, question. So, compound interest. Remember those compound interest problems where we were like, okay, it's compounded monthly. Okay, it was compounded monthly, yearly, annually, whatever, and you had N. <laughs> so, if it's compounded quarterly, how many times a year is that? Four. four. N is four. Now, what it... It was compounded continuously. So every nanosecond of every single minute of every day, the bank is paying you interest. Like now, 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 now. Lucky so you. how many times is that in a year? How many times is that in a year? A oh, oh, more than a million. It's an infinite amount, okay? So this is called continuously compounded interest. And this happens when you literally have to see the word continuously. When that happens, we don't use the P1 plus R over N and T anymore. Instead, we use this formula, okay? A equals P E to the R T, affectionately known to students as A pert, okay? This is what you use. Only if you use the word, only if you see the word continuously. So. Suppose you deposit $700 into an account, paying 3% annual interest, compounded continuously. That's the magic word. You want the balance in eight years. The formula we're going to use is this one because of the word continuously. Okay, hang on. You deposit $700. That's the principal. Your annual interest, the rate is 3%, which is 0.03. You want the balance in eight years, which is T. So A is 700, E to the 0.03 times eight. So let's see how much that is. Go to your calculator. You're going to plug all this into the calculator in one shot because we have these fancy calculators and we can do that. So 700. Uh -huh. 700 e to the power of 0 0.03 times 8. Okay, so listen. This is money, good. So we have to do $889.87. Just to ruin the, you know, magic for you. Just because you're getting paid an infinite number of times in the year, it does not mean you end up making that much money. Trust me, the bank knows what they're doing. No, no, not even taxes. So what ends up happening is you increase and then it levels off. So you really don't end up making more money than you would if you were being paid like daily or whatever. Okay. Oh, well, you can do that now. You can, you know the formula, P1 plus R over N to the NT. Okay. 
How long will it take for the balance to reach at least $1,200? So we want T and we want the balance to be 1200 So we want A to be 1200 Okay, how much was P? It's the same problem, 700 So A equals PE to the RT. Okay, A, now we want it to be 1200 equals 700 E to the 0.03 T. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Now, what are we going to do? Divide by 700. Well, we have to solve for T. T is all the way over here. So we divide by 700 first. Right. So here, you get 12 over 7 equals E 0.03 T. Now, this is an exponential. We use logarithms to solve exponential problems. So remember, the answer to a logarithm is always the exponent. So this is going to equal 0.03 T. And log base E, ln of 12 over 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how much that is. What's ln of 12 over 7? Okay, so it's 0.5389, blah, blah, blah. Equals 0.03t. Now what am I going to do? Divide by 0.03. So here, let's go ahead and divide that by 0.03. So it's 17.966. So it's about 18 years. Yes, 18 years. Yeah. You usually round to the nearest whole number. Just no, no, just round. No, 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 no. Just round to the whole number. Okay. This one we got a whole number because I worked backwards. I okay. So how much would you have deposited in order to reach a balance of fifteen hundred after twelve years? So this is A, and we want P. So it says, how much would you have to have deposited, which is P. So A is 1,500 equal to P E 0.03 times 12. So here, let's plug in just this. So E to the 0.03 times 12, all in the exponent, we get, you know, 1.433. Okay, now what am I going to do? Solve for P. Divide. So here, I actually write 1,500 divided by, am I going to type these numbers again? No, just do control answer. So I get P is 1,046.51. That's how much you should have deposited. Okay? Press start.